35. Attachments. Attachments, sins, and lusts are things in this life that we must be very aware of. Attacks of the devil. We are not uh, ignorant of his devices. And when he came to Eve, he offered her an addition, a lust, a desire <clears throat> that mirrored God's desire, but it was something that actually replaced everything that God had promised. It took from her everything that God uh, desired for her and her husband and purposed for her and replaced it. So you need to be very careful when you look into these areas of desires. We're going to talk about the desires of, of God in your life today, but a lust is an inor inordinate desire. It's something that goes beyond what God has ordained into a realm that perverts God's godly desires. Attachment to God was uh, the original purpose, the original plan, the original way things were. Uh, attachment to God and His purposes for mankind. Uh, but attachments to this world above God is sin. Now God gave us this world, God gave Adam this world, but you need to understand that your heart needs to be Godward, not earthward. So. God, uh, they that are after the flesh, in Romans 8, 5 through 9, mind the things of the flesh, have their minds set on the things of the flesh, things of this earth, and you need to be very careful that your mind and your heart is set on the things above where God sits at the right, Jesus sits at the right hand of God. Sin is a distraction. Desire, even strong desire, that God has placed inside of you must be controlled. God created mankind, and he spoke, let us make man in our image. And you'll see in Scripture, when God spoke, he created inside of mankind his own desires, his own um, purposes for mankind. He instilled in man by his word. Uh, Genesis 2, 19 and 20, he had a huge intellect, and he named all the animals. Uh, morality, uh, good and devoid of evil, Genesis 1, 31. Social interaction, Genesis 2.18, it is not good that man should be alone. These are things that God spoke and implanted in mankind. Uh, occupation, to dress and to keep the garden, Genesis 2.15. Self-preservation, Genesis 3.3, safety and protection, keep the garden, he said. Desire for food, the plants were, were good for food, God said in Genesis 1.29. Procreation, Genesis 1.28, desire for children through the sexual desire. Acquisition. God gave them their own garden. Praise God. Uh, dominion. Genesis 1.28. Have dominion and subdue the earth. Now these are things that God placed inside of mankind. But sin and lust and aberrant or errant desire is directed at God-given desire to twist them and to make them more important than God. To make the earth or the mind, or the pride of man, more important than the God who created it. Romans chapter 1, they served the creature uh, more than the creator. And this happens, this temptation <laughs> comes to every believer, every Christian. You see this in society, God-given desire directed towards what is unlawful, or not allowed within God's plan, makes it more destructive and is not fit for mankind to partake of. Uh, the evil side of desire is seen in knowledge and morality, everything we just listed. Uh, in, in God's good side, God's good plan, but uh, knowledge, to acquire knowledge uh, that is not in your best interest. Eve wanted the tree of knowledge and of good and evil. There's some knowledge you shouldn't get into. There's some knowledge you shouldn't touch. Morality. False standards of morality. Social uh, addictions or social aversions. Uh, God gave occupation to mankind, but you can work every hour of the week and it will destroy your life. God didn't give you occupation to occupy every single hour of the week. Self-preservation can morph into fear and paralysis. Uh, desire for food or overeating or the perfect body. Uh, this is perversion of God's original plan. Procreation, sexual explosion and liberation uh, is not God's plan, it has to be restrained, acquisition, greed, and use of resources for only you, dominion, 
God gave us dominion as men and women on this earth. But one nation or an individual holding malicious power over another was never God's intent. Uh, sin is a replacement for God. We just spoke earlier about Eve uh, having that desire for more, and it replaced. The devil didn't say, I'm going to give you this. Actually, he did. He lied to her. He said, you're going to have this and what God has given you. But what he did was he took from her what God had given her by giving her sin and introducing her to things that were never intended for her. Lusts and desires for more will actually replace God in your life. It will not enhance your relationship with God. It will replace. It is designed by the devil to be a replacement. So be incredibly careful, very, very careful, that you do not replace God by uh, over much indulgence and lust. You choose God or mammon. Everyone chooses either service to God or service to this world. There is no middle ground. No man can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. If you love the world, you do not love the Father. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Everything that belongs to the world, what the sinful self desires, what people see and want, and everything in this world that people are so proud of, none of this comes from the Father. It all comes from the world. And the world and everything in it that people desire is passing away. But those who do the will of God will live forever. You choose one or you choose the other. You choose this world or you choose God. Now, to be separate from this world in holiness, sanctification, to be saintly, to be free from this world is the goal of every believer. To operate and do God's will in this world is, is, our, is our goal as well. But to stay free, you cannot serve the world and set the world free at the same time. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. You have been raised to life with Christ, so set your hearts on the things that are in heaven, where Christ sits on the throne at the right side of God. Keep your mind fixed on things there, not on things here on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. This is such a powerful revelation. How sin was defeated in your life. Sin and its power over you was broken. This world wants to control you. This sin wants to control you. Lusts and attachments and things want to hold on to your life. And sin and your, the power over you is broken. Romans 6, 5-7 through 7, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Jesus Christ and him crucified has set us free from sin. You were crucified to this world. You were crucified to the sins, crucified to lust. And we now set our affections on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Every man that is tempted, when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed, and when lust has conceived or it seizes you, it brings forth sin. One's own forbidden longings and lusts are the things that will bring you into sin. So be free in the name of Jesus today from the attachments, the sins, and the lusts of this world that want to bind you. Be loosed and serve God. Set your affections on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.